Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. The exploration team of Wrangell Resources has defined a large target in Cote d'Ivoire, which is considered to be potentially the most exciting gold prospect in West Africa. Mining Weekly editor Martin Kremer tells us more. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Ashley. Now, new drill results have uh, identified a massive, massive system of multiple mineralized shears. Can you tell us about this? Yeah, you know, uh, Dr. Mark Brister is someone who really has done well in Africa. You know, he's got six mines in Africa, mm -hmm. and he <coughs> was a geological academic in KwaZulu Natal. And when we met up in the mid 90s in Selby, Johannesburg here, you know, the RAND mines was breaking up. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the pieces of it became RAND Gold Resources. And they said that the RAND Gold Resources would work outside of South Africa and it would list in London. And then you, you had other pieces, Harmony Gold sort of working in South Africa and DRD Gold working in South Africa. So these formed the old Rand mines, which was one of the big mining houses. And I remember Peter Flack saying to me that when he was wanting to rebuild Rand mines, he was interviewing a lot of people. And most of the people he was saying, look, I'm sorry, we, we're going to retrench you because we're heading in a new direction. And one of the people he had to interview was Dr. Mark Bristow. And he was in that same frame of mind that mm. he's going to tell Dr. <laughs> Mark Bristow, look, you know, we're going to have to let you go. But he was so impressed with what uh, Dr. Bristow was doing in Africa, even at that stage, the, the context that he had made that we weren't used to in South Africa, that he said, wow, guy, no, um, I'd, I want you to be our CEO. So that was the starting point, and you can see that uh, Dr. Mark Bristow has stayed with this idea of discovery and development. You know, from the start of the company, it had a tough beginning because the gold price fell. But he was able to develop Marilla in Mali, which we called the Gorilla. And uh, he's even now, he's making sure that the closure of that mine leaves an infinite horizon in agriculture and different mm -hmm. things so that people have something when the mine declines because the, the mining mining business has a, a finite horizon mm. and it is incumbent on the people in the mining industry to try and create an infinite horizon mm. while they've still got the means to do it and that's often in agricultural other pursuits which he's doing in Mali but in the meantime you know he, he firmed up a, a, a lot more uh, activity in Mali and I remember you know, going there to to his mine in Mali and, and the people ululating uh, and saying, you know, they were so happy that he had done this. And now you can see in the Ivory Coast where he is quite, um, he praises the regime there. He's made this very big discovery, which they say is potentially the most exciting gold prospect in West Africa. And I chatted to him of the results presentation and you know he said this is the big news that this this finding could be very big for them because you know he said that if you compare it to say Abawasi in Ghana and at one stage Rand Gold Resources were bidding for mm -hmm. that mine um, Anglo Gold Ashanti eventually got it and moved from Anglo Gold to Anglo Gold Ashanti mm -hmm. that's where the Ashanti came in and if you compare what he's discovered here, and it's, it's being firmed up, not totally yet, but they already <laughs> got a good delineation mm -hmm. of what to expect. You know, this is considerably bigger than Obuasi, <laughs> you know, almost, well, not quite twice the size, but it, it's, it's, it looks much bigger. So it seems that, again, you know, he's saying, if you don't look for new mines, you won't find them. If you do, you find them, and he's proving it up, particularly with a new set of geologists that, that he put in, firmed up that geological team. And you can see it uh, bearing results, which is very exciting for them. Now, the company also hopes to get beyond its required three million ounces at yes. a reasonable grade. I remember when I spoke to him initially in the old days in Selby, you know, he would say, 
if we get a million ounces, you know, we, we, we will be quite happy. And then it went to two million mm -hmm. ounces. But as they've got bigger, of course, <laughs> they want bigger mm -hmm. prizes. And now their limit is three million ounces. But it seems that this will go beyond that three million ounces. And we watch what's being done in Kabali, in, in, in uh, the Democratic Republic mm -hmm. of Congo. And we see that uh, that is also going to be a very, you know, that's a big mine. And I remember when we asked for a comparison, they said, Rand God Resources said at the time, it's, it's about as big as our old Blay for Reitzig, which was a big mine. <laughs> I remember my dad working at that mine. You know, it was a big mine. And they were saying that uh, their find in the DRC is as big as that. So these discoveries have been quite substantial. And then the development mm -hmm. uh, that he specializes in, you find that he doesn't do much um, m and what they call it, mergers and acquisitions. Mm -hmm. He finds it far more cost-effective to discover and develop, uh, and it, if you look at the cost per, per ounce, you know it's, it's far more moderate than you get when you actually merge and have to acquire something. But he does whisper that there are certain things happening that um, will be very good for the company. Not quite M&A, but he's not spelling it out yet. But there, there is a growth factor coming up that we're going to hear about besides, you know, his own discoveries. Mm. Now, Rangold is cash flush, given paying um, $59 million in cash taxes in the last quarter and $94 million in dividends. Can you expand on this? You know, it's again his geological approach. He, he won't mind something that, um, uh, uh, that has high cash costs. Mm. So n no matter, it's when you've watched him, except when the gold price fell to about $250 an ounce or something ridiculous uh, some time back, all the operations that he's had have always been able to have like a 20% margin, irrespective of, of where the gold price mm -hmm. is, because you know they can mine much at much lower cost. So that's what they target. So you can see that he's, he's building up cash. He's able to pay dividends, and he's still got cash which which puts him in a, in a strong position. But we will have to see exactly what he'll do with that money. It's good to have the cash. He has indicated in the past that he's not just going to buy anything. <laughs> it has to be good. Mm -hmm. but And that often he can prove that, that what he discovers is better in the long run. So, But we'll, um, it's still good to have that cash cushion mm -hmm. around the place. And, and that's what he's got at the moment. Thanks for speaking with us, Martin. It's a great pleasure, Sashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on South Africa's mining industry.